Design of buildings revolves around forces. Most common forces or loads applicable for a high-rise building are categorized into two types, gravity and lateral. In this video, I will focus on gravity loads and will cover lateral loads in another video. Gravity is for all loads that being applied in the direction of Earth gravitational forces or simply vertically. This includes dead load and live load. The majority of the gravity load is applied on the floor system, which transfers the load to columns and walls, and eventually to the foundation system. The magnitude of gravity loads has a direct effect on the floor system design, which must have sufficient strength and limited deflection and vibration at the same time. There are many different types of floor systems used in high-rise buildings such as reinforced or post-tension concrete slabs or composite steel and concrete deck. A higher gravity load will produce more vertical displacement or deflection on the floor. Deflection is mainly a serviceability condition and is limited to ensure comfortability for occupants. So let's start with the dead load. Dead load itself has two components called self-weight and superimposed dead. But why they call it dead? Well, because it is going to remain constant during the structure lifetime and most probably will not change. So what is self-weight? It is simply the building frame material weight including beams, floors, columns, walls or braces and is usually the largest component among other gravity loads. Self-weight loads are calculated directly from the volume of materials proposed for the design. Most common materials used in high-rise towers are mainly concrete, reinforcement and steel. While steel has a higher density compared to concrete, it is a much stronger material and that makes sections made with the steel smaller, which results in a lighter building. The biggest contributor of self-weight is usually the floor system, which covers a large area of each story and that is why a lighter floor system is preferable but they are more prone to vibration which is checked during the design process. Self-weight loads can be calculated automatically by most design programs based on the member sizes that the user has selected in the computer model. Then we have superimposed dead, which is to cover the floor finishes such as tiles, office raised floors, partitions, false ceilings and mechanical pipes, or basically anything that is non-structural and will remain permanently. It can also be the cladding load on the perimeter of the structure to represent the facade of the tower. The value of the superimposed dead load is calculated based on the architectural details. These loads are in the form of load value per square meter or square feet and will be written on the drawing so owner of the building can access it in case of a structural renovations or new requirements from tenants. Now let's talk about live loads. As it sounds, live loads don't sound very depressing. So unlike dead loads, live loads are to account for things that can move around or are temporarily. This can be humans, furniture, storage, cars or even snow. The amount of live load is usually taken from the standards or codes as engineers call it and is based on the intended usage. For instance, the American code requires that private rooms in hotels or in multifamily houses to be designed for about 40 pounds per square feet or 200 kg force per square meters. Like superimposed dead loads, live loads will be written on drawings called loading plans. Something interesting to mention. Since it is unlikely to have a building with all floors and spaces filled with near the capacity live load at the same time, design codes allow engineers to reduce the live load by a percentage when designing various elements such as columns or walls. Now that the gravity loads are determined, engineer can focus on the lateral loads which we will cover in another video soon.